This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. PDF editing for your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Learn more at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time around, we're going to talk about not one, but two services, one of which you may be familiar with, one of which you may not be familiar with. You may not be familiar with either one of them, but you should be familiar with all of them. We have the team here from uh, micro.blog. We also have uh, the team from Sunlit. And I think the two teams overlap, sort of like a Venn diagram. (laughs) So let's go around the table. Let's find out who's here, and then they can explain it maybe and do a better job than I did. First up, our friend Gene McDonald is back after way too long an absence. Gene, it's great to see you. Yeah, it's really great to see you too, Chuck. And uh, happy to be here to talk about micro.blog and um, our... uh, companion app sunlit for for photo blogging great uh beside her at least on my screen is manton reese of micro.blog manton welcome back to the show it's great to have you too thanks for having me back it's good to be here and for his first time here on mac voices uh jonathan hayes of sunlit jonathan thanks thanks for having me is is that correct you are of sunlit or you authored sunlit or (laughs) Yeah, uh, Sunlit is an app that Mandan and I uh, co-worked on long before Micro.blog. Uh, it actually has quite a quite a long history. So, great, great. Well, then I, I'm not quite sure who to uh, to ask to fill us in here. So, Gene, maybe I'll let you start off, or point to one of the other two and let them do it. Um, I'm going to point to Manton. Point. Okay. <laughs> Man, she does that really well. So you're up to talk about, I guess, the newest uh, version of micro.blog and some new enhancements. Yeah, we just shipped uh, 2.0 of micro.blog, which is an update across basically the whole platform. So like a lot of the web stuff was updated, the new iOS app uh, updated, new Mac app uh, works great on Big Sur and some updates for iOS 14 and just kind of across, across the board updates to the native apps and adding a bunch of features. So we've been working on that for a long time and it's, it was really good to get that out. Um, a lot of little improvements and bringing like all the platforms more in line and then some big stuff like um, revamping how we deal with bookmarks and archiving web pages that you want to read later and, um, and blog about. So as a, as a micro.blog user, will I see any immediate changes in the way I interact with it? Or is the, these just, are these just new features that I can tap? A little of both. Like there's definitely noticeable changes for people who use it, you know, a lot. And they're kind of used to the old user interface. The web, we redesigned the web interface. So it's just a lot cleaner and easier to access like blog settings and things like editing posts and managing your blog. Um, and then... And then just improvements, you know, like new features that uh, add to like the native apps, for example, being able to uh, manage uploads better, th- things like that, just improvements. So that like some of them you might not notice right away, but we've snuck in a bunch of, you know, little improvements and big features in there that eventually you'll, <laughs> you'll notice. Now, I, I've, it's my fault because we sort of jumped right out of the gate, like, what's new? And <laughs> we didn't really, did, didn't really explain maybe what micro.blog is for folks who might not be familiar with it. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you to do that as, as an alternative to, um, let's just say, some other social media platforms that uh, <laughs> right now are, are under the gun in, for, for lots of reasons. <laughs> Right, and we're very you know aware of of that, and actually a lot of the big the reason that microdouble exists is because of problems in other uh, social networks, and so we're very mindful of that. And it's 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 a new platform that uh, takes a lot, just kind of borrows a lot from Twitter and kind of mainstream social networks, but um, really focusing on the community, having a nice you know encouraging place um, that is hopefully free of harassment and. Um, some of the problems that the bigger networks have run into. Um, And then it's also a blogging platform. So giving people a a voice, giving people a place on the internet, you know, where they have their own domain name and they can blog and they can write about whatever or post photos and, you know, create a podcast, uh, being able to host that for people also. So it's, it's kind of both those things. Um, It's a, it's a new social network where people can interact. And then it's also a blogging platform um, that is kind of the foundation for just making the, 
social network more open and uh, more compatible with different services too. I don't use micro.blog nearly enough. I, I tap just that much of its power, but my interaction with it has has surprised me because for everything you just said, you know, it gives people a place to create a platform to write. I don't, uh, at least I have not encountered some of the the things that are making Twitter and Facebook maybe not so pleasant places to be. I can't decide if it's because you are policing it with a heavy hand or if it's self-policing or or what, or is it just one of those that the the the, uh, the users you know reject anybody that tries to take it in that direction. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, speaking as the community manager, I was, I was hired to uh, carry a big stick and whack those trolls, which it, I, at least that's what I thought I was going to be doing. But I think because we you know started small, we are a blogging platform. We're not just for people to come on and, uh, you know, post little hits of micro posts if they don't, I mean, they can do that, but you know, it's people who want to create their space on the internet, uh, under hopefully their own domain names. They can, uh, um, use their micro dot blog blog with, um, you know, their own domain names. We don't lock people into a silo, so they're creating a space that's theirs. Um, and I think, you know, there's comes with that kind of ownership, uh, a, a feeling of, I want this to be nice, uh, you know, not necessarily nice in manners per se, but just a, a place that I can be proud of, you know, that my, um, this is my blog. And when other people see their uh, small short posts, because you can write short posts that are 280 characters or less that appear in the timeline, or if you write a blog post that's longer, a link to it appears in the timeline. So other people can see that and, you know, react to it. Um, And lots of really, you know, thoughtful, civil discussions go on at micro.blog because of that, um, because people are really interacting with other uh, people with the same interests, I would say, you know, in having a different kind of internet. Um, you, uh, it, it, because it's a blogging platform, it's not a free platform. So we're we're offering a place to have your blog and your podcast. Um, and so, you know, like any other service, you pay for that monthly. So there isn't drive-by trolling, uh, you know, usually. Um, and I mean, there is a 10 day free trial and, um, people can try it out, but I um, oversee it pretty much everything that gets posted there. And if I see something fishy or, uh, you know, something that violates our community guidelines, which are, you know, pretty strict in this, you know, standard, you know, no, we don't tolerate, um, uh, kinds of things that, even uh, that other platform, <laughs> they say they don't tolerate it, but obviously they do because we all see it. Um, th- so, you know, I can I can just text Manton real quick and say, you know, close this account, you know, <laughs> or at least, you know, make this account um, invisible while we investigate what's going on here. So I think that that has made a big difference. You know, it's even if there is a way to use micro.blog without paying us, if you have your own blog uh, hosted elsewhere, so say at WordPress, you can have your posts from WordPress feed into our timeline. Um, but, you know, that that also sort of sets the bar a little higher. You have to be somebody who's interested in, in blogging um, on your own site before you hop on the micro dot blog timeline. So I think that helps. Jonathan, I want to get you in this. I want to come back to some of that gene, but I want to get Jonathan in um, to explain Sunlit and its relation to uh, micro dot blog. 
Sure. So a uh, real brief, quick history on Sunlit. Uh, Sunlit actually began its life, uh, Matt and I discussing building actually an app for panoramas, panorama photos, which uh, was, Apple came out with the new panorama, well, not new anymore, but the panorama support for, for photos way back when. And so we thought we'd build an app around that. And from there, it turned into an app to sort of uh, photo journal uh, your history or, or maybe a trip or a family album or things like that. And shortly after working on that, uh, the app.net platform came out for those that are, you know, know what that was. And we decided to adapt Sunlit to work on the app.net platform. And um, that a lot of, a lot of what is in Sunlit today sort of came out of that beginning, you know, that, that sort of iteration of that. Um, but obviously the app.net platform shut down and for a while Sunlit just sort of lay dormant. Uh, and uh, after Manton launched uh, the micro.blog platform, he and I both realized that this would be a great, uh, great platform to sort of extend Sunlit into, you know, to be backed by the, by the micro.blog platform. Um, at its core, it still is a photo centric app. It's about sharing, creating and taking and, and sharing photos, um, you know, on the web. One of the fantastic things about the micro.blog blog platform is how open and extensible uh, it is. And one of the things that we've been able to do with Sunlit is take a platform that was written with a very specific purpose, but yet was written in an extensible way that we could adapt the app to use it almost seamlessly. You know, um, it's, it's a great way for users to share photos, to take photos. And like Gene was saying, you know, they own their own content at that point. You know, if, if micro.blog is hosting their blog, their photo blog, Sunlit lets them capture those, share those, view other people's, discover other photos. Uh, it's a really, it's a really great platform for that. So that's sort of the, the brief history of Sunlit. So how does Sunlit fit in or integrate with micro.blog or does it, or is it just a separate associated service? And I, and I've, I will ask for your forgiveness right now, but I'll just say, okay, over here we have uh, Twitter over here. We have Instagram. Everybody understands forget the politics and the ownership and all that they're, they're, they look different because they basically are different. Yeah. You can share photos on Facebook uh, or pardon me on Twitter, but you share them in a different way on Instagram. Is that sort of the same kind of dynamic between sunlit and um, micro dot blog, or is there a different dynamic? I'll let Matt and jump in as well, but I'd say it's very similar uh, that, you know, if you post something in sunlit, you can also view it in the micro.blog app uh, and vice versa. If you post photos in the micro.blog app, you can also view them in Sunlit. Um, not sure if you want to add anything else to that, man. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it really, the, the main difference comes down to, well, first of all, Sunlit is all about photos, right? So you don't, you don't see any other kinds of posts in there except photos. Um, and then also just the, the interface has been designed just around photos and the things people want to do with photos. So it's a much, I guess, richer interface for that kind of thing. Like if you're sharing, let's say, multiple photos, even text and photos like interspersed together. Um, so in some ways, you can actually create posts that are even uh, just more I mean, complicated is not the right word, but just ha have more detail or have different parts to them, even more so than something like um, Instagram. Or you can use it just to post a single photo, add a little text if you want. Um, but the the idea of making it just about photos really opens up the types of um, like just the design of the app. Um, so it, it can be focused on that one thing. And sometimes people go back and forth between micro.blog and sunlit. And sometimes people just want to use sunlit. They just, they kind of want to break from the text and the links and the other posts. So they just kind of want to deal with photos because, uh, sometimes that's just a nice, more enjoyable, you know, interface, mm -hmm. um, browsing photos from friends and discovering other people that are posting uh, great photos. So, um, you can, you can do a combination of things. Yeah, you can use both apps or you can just kind of stay in the photos land for a little while and, and just use Sunlit. Yeah. Yeah, and just to be you know clear, Twitter and Instagram are two different companies. You have two different accounts. You, 
you know, you can do some cross posting between them, but there's not um, micro dot blog. You have one account and you can use Sunlit with it, or you can use the micro dot blog app, depending whether you want to focus primarily on photos or you want to do more traditional text based posts and, you know, little quips and such. But uh, so they're, they're not really separate uh, entities. They're uh, two, um, two spins on the same platform. Uh, two different ways to to use the same platform, same account. You don't have a separate Sunlit account. It's micro.blog is uh, underneath everything. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. a good point that the that the Sunlit users are in the end micro.blog users, um, and that's one of the great things that we found. Uh, la- you know, launching Sunlit as part of the micro.blog platform is you know a picture tells a thousand words. You know, better than a thousand words and People that use Sunlit, I've noticed uh, there's they've started to sort of find like-minded people. Like, for example, there's a discover section in the app, and one of the sections uh, is running. You know, photos about running. Um, and I've I've posted a few you know photos of runs that I've gone on, and I've the interactions that I've had with you know I've, I've met new people and, and had interactions that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, simply because, you know, we can see each other's photos and, and each other's maps and runs and other things. And, and there's a lot of different areas in Discover that are like that. And some that really enable sort of some of that, you know, um, organic community building, which was really neat to see. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen and Text Expander. The folks at Smile are at it again. The newest edition of PDF Pen, PDF Pen 12.2, adds the ability to include selected items to the library from the context menu and make some changes for Big Sur compatibility so that it's ready to go on launch day. But that's not all. PDF Pen Pro 12.2 also includes the ability to add selected items like images, icons, or custom annotations to the PDF Pen library directly from the context menu and also includes a new scripting window for editing and adding JavaScript calculation fields to interactive forms and more. That last one is a true pro feature and keeps up with the tradition of being one of the most powerful PDF editing applications out there. PDF Pen is one of those utilities I use on a regular basis to accomplish all sorts of gymnastics with PDFs, things I couldn't do any other way. That's why I use it, and that's why I think you should use it too. Give it a try at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. That's smilesoftware.com slash podcast to try PDF Pen, my choice for editing PDFs smilesoftware.com slash podcast. Thanks to Smile for being the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. Uh, thank you for the clarification because that that answers the first thing that, you know, I have a micro.blog account, so therefore I have access to micro.blog and Sunlit. Is it, I mean, am I going to see, uh, forgive me because I, I don't know how else to do this except for um, analogies that people may be familiar with. Am I seeing my sunlit photos or scratch it, your sunlit photos? Am I seeing your sunlit photos and your posts all in one stream or am I jumping back and forth between the two? How is that integration for, for the user? Yeah, right now you see, so everybody you follow um, in sunlit, you see all their photos and nothing else. So if they post a bunch of stuff that's not photos, those just aren't not included in the app. Um, and you can, click through any photo and if there's like a conversation there and some replies, then you can see those and you can reply. Um, But if it's not, if it doesn't like start with a photo post, it is not in the app. It's just for photos. Um, And on the micro.blog side, you see everything. So if you sign in there, um, you do see posts, uh, photo posts from Sunlit um, along with other types of posts. And I mean, we've definitely gotten some feedback that some people would prefer to just see the photos in Sunlit because they are using the app. And so we've thought about maybe having a preference where uh, if you've already seen you know, the photos in Sunlit and you're using Sunlit, um, they don't show up in micro.blog also. Um, so like to, to kind of take your analogy, it'd be kind of like, you know, on Instagram, you know, if, if those Instagram photos, if, if everyone you follow on Instagram always cross posted their photos to Twitter um, and there was a way to like, disable that, um, give people some flexibility in what they saw. It'd be kind of like that, but that's not the way it works right now, but we've thought about different ways of splitting that 
up. And I think there's a lot of flexibility going forward. I mean, Sunlit 3.0, this brand new version, is um, it's a complete rewrite and uh, just a nicer user interface, a lot more familiar for people that are coming from Instagram. And I think there's a lot of potential from here to to build other you know types of experiences on top of it. One thing I've always noticed though about Micro.blog is that you seem to be very community driven, not just in the discussions, but also in the responsiveness and the modifications you're making to the platform, in addition to trying to build it out and give it more capabilities. And so that I assume that you are accepting feedback on that. Sounds like you're already getting it, whether you're accepting it or not. <laughs> um, but you know, is that something that, that people should vote on or give you their thoughts on? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, we're getting feedback all the time, you know, all day long <laughs> people send feedback <laughs> and we're always happy to happy to hear it. And we've tried to be real deliberate about like what, where we take the platform. So we are improving it a lot. Like it's, if you, if you look back over the last couple of years, it is just, you know, night and day, it's just so much better and there's so much more in it. Um, but on the other hand, we really try to be careful about not just throwing the whole kitchen sink at it and like really being deliberate about what features are added. Um, so happy to hear, love hearing from people. Um, <laughs> and some of those things, you know, we'll do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's been interesting. Um, so it's it, we're closing in on four years uh, since the launch of Micro.blog. And even, you know, myself coming from a Twitter experience, you know, I needed to ramp up on, on how to appreciate um, some of the things like that Manton didn't add to micro.blog. Uh, initially, it seemed odd, but then you you think, well, just because Twitter does it doesn't mean it's necessarily a good idea. So, for example, um, you don't see your followers on micro.blog. You don't see like a list of followers, you know you follow people whose posts you like um, you can see who other people are following if, if you aren't already following them, but that's like a tool for you to find maybe some new accounts to follow. But uh, you know, not knowing who's following you, I think is probably the number one thing that uh, new users who come from Twitter and think, oh, this will be just like Twitter, but nicer, friendlier, or, you know, less, no ads, for example. But uh, not knowing who's following you, we, I've found, and a lot of people, you know, now, I think the community would not like to go back generally to that uh, model of seeing who's following you because there's something liberating about you're just, you're writing, you know, you're creating your blog and like you have something to say, you say it. And we don't, we don't judge whose accounts are important or who's got the most authority just based on some number of, you know, followers or likes. That's the other thing we don't have. We don't, if you want to appreciate somebody's post, you have to reply to them and say, hey, I really liked your piece, or I really liked your photo, or I, uh, you know, sometimes I disagree with you about that. And it's been really fascinating to watch like disagreements play out on micro.blog because it is nothing like Twitter. <laughs> it's people, uh, they, you know, listen to each other, they agree to disagree sometimes, but they also, um, if somebody says something that maybe was a little too flip, uh, a little, you know, insensitive and get someone else points that out, they, they apologize. Like I keep like a little file of people apologizing on micro.blog <laughs> because I just love that, that, you know, we behave like human beings would who were in, in a discussion in person, you know, we don't, there's very little uh, snarky, um, you know, cut downs. They're almost, I mean, uh, practically zero. No, people don't come on there to to show off or cut each other down at all. So that's awesome. That, that is awesome. Um, and it's something that I think to a large degree, as long as we keep the politics, the, the, the left-right politics out of it, I think the tech community has, does a pretty good job of that. Um, 
you know, of, of trying to respect each other's spaces for the most part, but the the world at large doesn't seem to have any concept of that anymore. And it's a shame. And it's the idea that there's this, I'm hesitant to call it a, a nice safe little space called micro dot blog that where they can go to, you know, to express their opinions, but yeah. it, it, it sounds like that's, and, and the fact I did want to go back to the fact Gene, that you had mentioned that this is a pay for service um, mm-hmm. that too, right away disqualifies I forget what you said, the drive-by trolls, I believe was your phrase or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, you know, the people that are just there to, okay, let's, let's stick a match to it and, and watch it burn. Um, you know, th- there's a, there's a little bit of skin in the game. It's not a ridiculous amount of money, but there's a little skin in the game. And so the trolls go where they, they don't have to have any skin in the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's, there's so many people that are on micro.blog because they were looking for something that was better than other places that they were frustrated with. And so that also makes a huge difference. Like, yeah, not only they are a little bit invested in the platform by, you know, paying $5 a month, but also they are invested in that they really want it to succeed because they are looking for a better community. They're looking for a better place. And so that, yeah, that also really helps um, because there's, yeah, a lot of people just set out to, well, where's a better place on the internet? I'm frustrated with mm-hmm. what I'm seeing on other big platforms. Jonathan, is is that that obviously that same philosophy call carries over to to Sunlit? Um, do you feel pressure to add some of the features that um, again we got to bring up Instagram? But some of the features that some Instagram and and some of the other social uh, media services are adding oriented around photos, or are you pretty much happy with where it is and just let it grow organically? So one of the things that we did with Sunlit 3.0 is we actually made a conscious choice to open source it. So all of the Sunlit code is actually on a GitHub repository that people can go view, they can add comments, they can ask questions, they can file issues with. And we've already actually had a few people contribute back to the project, which is fantastic. Um, so I, I feel like the philosophy, the micro.blog core philosophy, is, you know, we carry that through Sunlit not only because it's built on, on the micro blog platform, but also just how it's community driven. And, you know, we want to hear from people. We want people to engage. We want it to be, you know, a, a project and an app sort of, you know, built and developed for and by the community itself. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, that, that feels like the early days of some of the social networks that, you know, the, some of the things were being driven by the users, not by corporations. Yeah, there's certainly no both on micro.blog and on Sunlit. You never have a question of, you never have a question of whether some a post is being done by a bot or not. You know, with 100% <laughs> certainty, there's no bots, uh, you know, on the platform, which is very refreshing. Yeah. Okay, I can't let that go. So, how 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 difficult has it been to keep the bots out? For um, Madden or Jonathan, it, yeah, one. it it varies. Like at the beginning, there was not much of a problem. Um, you would have a couple fake accounts created every once in a while with with random people. Um, but for the most part, the things we've already talked about um, made just made the platform more appealing to everybody else that was looking for something better and that was invested in it. Um, we have had, I would say, over the last year. Um, just a, a bunch of random like fake accounts that created like in batch people that will never pay or use the service. And so we've had to keep on top of that. And we, it's just, it's going to be, you know, that's our job to keep on top of it. Um, and usually it's not a problem. Um, and, and really one of the kind of philosophies with micro.blog is uh, it's difficult for someone to game the system and, insert themselves into the timeline. Um, Whereas like on Twitter, you're constantly seeing like trending hashtags and things like that, where um, they can be gamed random people who, you know, disagree with you or want to cause trouble um, appear in your timeline or appear in some of the other sections of, of the app. So micro.blog is designed to like discourage that. So it's really rare that that um, could happen. Um, and then behind the scenes, yeah, that's basically, we just have to keep an eye on it, make sure that um, there are no bots and other other problems. Um, some of that stuff will come up, um, but the combination of 
the app and the platform being designed so that they are, it's not effective, like spammers aren't effective, basically. Um, that combined with the fact that we're just paying attention um, is, uh, is enough for now. But it, uh, that's something that we have to keep working on. I ask only because I think anyone that has run any kind of website, um, you know, you have comments on websites and sometimes you have uh, message boards on websites. And I know for a while I tried those, both of those on Mac voices and I just shut them down because I was spending more time trying to police them and, and not from necessarily bad people, but just from the bots that hmm. it's like, okay, fine. Comments right. closed everywhere. No message board. If you want to contact me, you can do it on social media or you can do it by email. But, you know, it just, it, I mean, it spoils the experience unless you have someone who you can dedicate to that 100% of the time. And as a community manager, Gene, I don't see that as a community manager job. That's more, <laughs> I don't know, an enforcer kind of a bodyguard kind of job uh, as opposed <laughs> well, to a community manager. I- I am a little disappointed in how few heads I've had to crack uh, <laughs> on this job. <laughs> I was um, no, seriously. The uh, um, I, I think, as Manton says, it, it, it's it would be hard for you to get in the face of a micro dot blog user with any, you know that. Uh, Unlike you know those random people who who zing you um, elsewhere who who you know can do a search we don't have that kind of search you know if you say you don't let's say you don't like guinea pigs and you go on Twitter and you search for guinea pigs and then you go and like harass all the guinea pig lovers that's a doable thing it's not doable on microdot blog because you would be hard pressed to figure out who the people are unless. Um, you were on the platform for a while, already following them, but they're not following you. And we don't have the ability for people to um, necessarily, you know, and we have muting, you know, that is very easy to do as well. So even if there's somebody who, you know, you just don't want to see their opinions anymore, it's pretty easy to turn them off. So yeah, there isn't that like that feeling of randomness because there's no hashtags. I mean, people use hashtags, but they don't, they don't function like they do elsewhere. They don't, um, you can't just click on a hashtag and see all the, you know, get hashtag guinea pigs and find all the guinea pig lovers and, and then start to mess with them or send them advertisements, you know. <laughs> That's a very specific example, Jean. Anything you want to tell us? No, no, I have never gotten any, uh, uh, any hate from the internet because of the guinea pigs. I, that's why I used it as an example because I figured it was purely theoretical. And boy, <laughs> the first person who comes hating on guinea pigs is gonna gonna really hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and the combination too of like like um, I mean, we do have free accounts, uh, like Jean said, where you could try it for ten days and. If you like it or not, that's great. Um, but there's not like a permanent free account unless you are someone who's bringing your own blog, in which case you're not a spammer or you're someone causing trouble. You're probably someone that has been blogging for a while, someone that um, is maybe a little more technical or doesn't mind tinkering um, with their site. Um, the vast majority, I would say all of those people so far on micro.blog um, are coming with good intentions. They're not coming to cause trouble. Um, and so that also really helps. Um, the, whereas with other, you know, mainstream ad supported, you know, platforms, um, accounts are free forever and um, someone can just be kind of lurking there ready to cause trouble later. And it's really difficult, I would assume, for some of those big platforms to stay on top of it just because of the massive scale. We're pretty small and we like to be small. I mean, we're, we're, we're continuing to grow. We've grown a lot over the last few years. Um, but being small has its advantages in terms of being able to keep an eye on the community, um, creating a, a place that uh, is really thoughtful about what the community wants and also not having to deal quite as much with the huge scale problems that some of the big platforms have to deal with. The crew from Micro.blog and Sunlit will be back to talk more about what Sunlit brings to Micro.blog's capabilities, some additional capabilities of Micro.blog that you may not be aware of, and more. That's next time on Mac Voices. I hope you'll join us. Until then, and as always, 
Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.